Hi there and welcome to the Coffee and Heroes YouTube show. Time for your weekly roundup of everything going on with Coffee and Heroes. Uh, everything going on in the comic and movie and TV worlds that caught our eye. And uh, giving you a little bit of an insight into this week's releases and bits and pieces I've enjoyed and that kind of thing. So yeah, the last week, uh, not really an awful lot has changed. Uh, we're still obviously waiting for uh, final clarification on a date for reopening. At the moment, it's tentatively 1st of April. And uh, until more decisions are made, that seems to be the case. I personally think it'll go a little beyond that, but hopefully, you know, the end is in sight. Uh, you know, the store, I've, I've documented it well here. I've been working really hard behind the scenes, getting the store ready, and it's pretty much there. You know, it's, it's reaching a point now where it's literally just, I'm taking new releases in to have them stocked up, ready for reopening. And uh, I have one more thing to do regarding the sign outside, which just have to wait and see. But other than that, it's, it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. So most of my energy now is going into the website. I am putting more and more titles on there every week. There's new releases going on there tonight. So uh, I'll guide you through my pull list this week anyway and, and let you know the kind of stuff that's out this week. But before I get into that, I, I always like to sort of let you guys know what I've been enjoying in the last week. Now, one of the things you can do is you can check out the podcast. We, uh, myself, Keith and Patty just recorded a new one and released it last night. It's covering releases from a couple of weeks ago. So with it, we're still getting caught up a little bit. We're just one week behind now. But the idea is that by next week, we'll be back up to date again. And the good thing is, though, with it being a couple of weeks behind, all those titles are still on the, the website. So there's, there's plenty available there. We have all those titles at home. So if there's any sales with comic millers at home, deliveries will be sent out straight away. So they will. So you'll not be waiting long for them should, they, uh, should you pick up, up anything from the website. But... Yeah, I mean, in terms of things that I enjoyed in the last week or so, uh, there was three titles that really stood out for me, and uh, we had one DC and two indie. Uh, so first of all, Batman is back, so Batman 106, James Tinian back on the title, and George Jimenez on art. What an issue this was. Um, you've also got the backup story, I should say, Robin, which feature, uh, which is written by Joshua Williamson, with art by Gleb Melnikoff. Little cameo appearance in this. Uh, there's also the first appearance, well, technically second appearance after Infinite Frontier of a new design for Scarecrow. I mean, it's it's a speculation issue to a degree, but it's just a damn fine issue. You know, first and foremost, I always say with regards to any speculating, you know, just pick things that you enjoy. You know, and enjoy the medium for what it is, and then if you happen to get lucky along the way and pick up a title that becomes hot or whatever. All the better for it but this is a brilliant jumping on point if you're uh wanting to get into batman comics i know it's issue 106 but this is the start of a brand new continuity dc obviously had a break there for a couple of months with future state but we're now back on to the main titles and it's going to be monthly now as well as opposed to weekly but it'll always include a backup story so that was pretty great we had the long-awaited berserker uh, from kenny reeves matt kent and art by ron garney the cover is actually Raphael Grandpa though. Really good first issue, oversized, a lot of imagery, not an awful lot of dialogue, a lot of action. Very mature title. Uh, do not let your kids read this. It's exceptionally violent. and But it, it had a really good story. I really like what they're setting up with it. And I'm looking forward to discovering more of it. You can tell why it's being sort of made as a comic book, but this will be a movie along the way. I have absolutely no doubt. So... Jump onto that if you get a chance. Big print run on that. So don't be thinking that you have to <clears throat> pay over cover price for that one because the print run was massive. It was the most ordered comics for most ordered indie comic for retailers in maybe the last five years. So don't pay over the odds for it. But my undoubted issue of the week, and we'll get into this more in the podcast next week as well, was Noctera. So Noctera is an interesting one because I should really have a graphic novel behind me of Noctera. It was originally a Kickstarter campaign uh, launched by Scott Snyder. He's created his own um, comics label called Best Jacket Press. And it seems to be now in conjunction with Image as well. So it was initially a Kickstarter where you bought the entire graphic novel. But, you know, with what's going on in the world right now and shipping delays and, and things like that, we haven't received them yet. So I actually got the single issue before I got the trade, even though I ordered the trade about a year ago. But there's other cool stuff coming with nice prints and stuff. So... 
it'll be worth the wait. But as an issue, this was awesome. So we have Tony S. Daniel on art, Tome More on colors, and Snyder on writing. I really think Snyder does a lot of his best stuff in indie. Uh, he makes it very approachable. He makes it easy to understand, easy to follow, easy to get lost in this world, and is great at world building full stop. So I know we've got copies of it on the website. Don't miss out on this. This was brilliant, easily the best title of last week. And I say that on a week where a new Batman issue came out. What, what more do you need? So yeah, those were the titles that really stood out for me last week. But what I'll do is I'll go into what uh, is my pull list this week. A few cool things I got in for myself. And then I'll, I'll show you some of the graphic novels that came in this week as well. Because, you know, I showed off last week some of the graphics we've been getting into the store. Why we've been closed just to make it as, you know, make the library that we have as big as possible. And to make the choice and variety as much as possible. So... But I'll show you my pull list first anyway, so a oh, bit of a hefty chunky one, as always. But it doesn't include any variants, I've taken those out. I think I had seven this week, so... Ah, oh, variants. Uh, but anyway, what have we got this week? So I'm jumping onto Amazing Spider-Man. I have long been told how great this next Spencer run is. I've been very up and down on it so far, but this seems like a good jumping on point again. I think it even has New Spider Era Begins here, so... The idea is if you want to get into Amazing Spider-Man, then this is a good jumping on point. Patrick Gleason on art as well, so that has me very interested. We have the next part of American Vampire 1976. So Scott Snyder, Raphael Albuquerque, that's book six of I believe it's going to be ten now. Uh, Casual Fling number two. I chatted about this on last week's podcast. This is an AWA title. It's more of a mature title. And it's the kind of title that it's good for comic stores to have because... You're always going to get people who come in who aren't into superheroes, and that's absolutely fine. There's tons of choice out there. This one plays like an adult thriller, and I think we need more books like this in the comics world, to be honest. So, looking forward to issue two of that. We have Children of the Atom out this week, so a new number one in the X line. This one's actually a secret variant, so it is the, the main cover slightly different. But looking forward to jumping into that. That's been long delayed, so... We will see. Uh, next issue of Commanders in Crisis, so number 6 of 12 for the Steve Orlando David Tinto title. Any week that has a new issue of Conan and any week that has a new issue of Daredevil is a good week. Uh, you know, I jumped on to Conan. I've spoken of my love for this run through Marvel. It's available in hardcover form now for the first 12 issues. Get on that. And then new Daredevil, always a bonus. Sadarsky continuing to do his usual great work. And Marco Cicchetto on art for that. We have Deep Beyond, which is number two. This is a new Mirka and Dolfo underwater set horror title. I enjoyed the first issue. It didn't blow me away, but I'll always give issue, I'll always give series at least two, maybe even three issues. You know, issue one is normally all about setup, and issue two is where the, you start to get to know your characters and plot starts moving forward. So I'll look forward to that. I really enjoyed uh, Mirka and Dolfo's Mercy, so I have faith um, of Demon Day's X-Men. Peach Momoko's first ever interior art title for Marvel. Look forward to that. We have next issue of Eternals. I still am not sure what I think about Eternals. I, I just know so little about it. And the first two issues were fun, but they didn't really stay with me. Although the art by Isad Ribic is awesome. So I'll stick with Eternals for now. Got a few Future State ones in. These should have actually come last week, but they got <clears throat> slightly delayed. And... Uh, that seems to be happening more and more with DC titles at the moment. They don't always line up with what the release scheduling is online. So the last few Future State for me are uh, Future State Aquaman, Legion of Superheroes, Future State Suicide Squad, and Future State Superman vs. Imperious Lex. Although I think it has one more issue to go. So uh, Future State isn't quite finished just yet. What else have we got? Easily one of the biggest releases this week. We have the new Joker series, brand new number one. James Tinian, Guillaume March on art. Uh, and then this one's going to have a backup story of Punchline as well. I really do like this new Infinite Frontier logo design and trade dress they're going with. You know, that's a very classic looking Joker at the top. So those will definitely be on the website later. We ordered big on that, but I think that's going to be a big title. We have Knock Em Dead, issue four, I believe, of five, Aftershock uh, title. Another big one that came out this week that was delayed for a long time is Nonstop Spider-Man. This has went through various changes. It was initially due out, I think, last July or September. Then it was moved again to the end of the year. Then it was moved to January, and now it's finally come out. So that is uh, Joe Kelly and Chris Bacallo on art. One of the ones I'm most looking forward to this week, and might just be my pick for this week, 
uh, is Proctor Valley Road. This is a new Boom series. Now, Boom have a great record in the last couple of years of getting great titles off the ground to create loads of buzz. You know, you think something is killing the children is a perfect example. And with Proctor Valley Road, this is Grant Morrison's first creator-owned work in quite a while. So he he finished up a run on Green Lantern recently. So the fact he's going to be able to put all his attention on the indie stuff has me very excited. A Redemption issue two this week. So Krista Faust and um, Mike Diodato Jr., female gunslinger. First issue of this was superb. It was, uh, I believe, my pick of the week when we did the podcast. Important stuff. We got uh, Rorschach number six of 12. So the usual amazing cover for Rorschach. Whoever designs these covers, I'm pretty sure it is Jorge Fornes. Uh, just do such a great job every time. Tom King keeping the, the good stuff coming there. Uh, after a small break, because the first arc ended at issue eight, we have Strange Academy. Very underrated title, brilliant for all ages. If you've got younger readers in your family, get them onto this. Just imagine Harry Potter, but in the Marvel Universe. And it introduces loads of cool new characters. And then another one I'm really looking forward to this week that I ordered quite big on. And in the last week, everybody just jumped on it. I think we only have like one or two copies of it left at most. But uh, this is Swamp Thing. It's going to be a 10-issue miniseries by Ram V. Uh, with art by Mike Perkins. And yeah, you know, anything that brings Swamp in is all fine by me. So I will look forward to that as well. There were a couple of graphics that came for me this week as well. And again, we've got uh, extras for the store. We have uh, Wonder Woman Earth 1 Volume 3. I was speaking there about Grant Morrison for Proctor Valley Road. And uh, this has been great. This is the third volume. Yannick Paquette's always been the artist on it as well. And uh, this is Volume 3. I believe this is the last volume. Uh, I think if I just look here. So there's the first two volumes of it just there. So... These are really great books. If you're looking to get into Wonder Woman and just want a good standalone story, uh, these are fantastic. They have their own continuity, but they also have good continuity in terms of the creative team involved because same writer and artist the whole way through. A big one arrived for me this week, as you can obviously tell. I love my omnibuses. And even though I have the Absolute, which covers the first 11 issues of this, we have Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. So this is actually volume one. So there's a volume two, I believe, on the way. Look at the size of that. Oof. Uh, so this is going to cover Batman 0 to 33, as well as 23.2. That was one of the Villains Month issues. I'll be surprised if that's not the Joker one. And then it has Batman Annual 1 and 2 as well. So 0 to 33, you're covering Court of Isles, City of Isles. You're covering uh, Death in the Family. Uh, you're covering Zero Year as well. It, I believe that's just going to stop just before Endgame, which is the other Joker story as well. And then I treated myself to a little something that you will probably see on the background up here uh, by the next episode. So another one of the fantastic McFarlane lines. This is the Death Metal Bat Bike or Bat Cycle. Just look at that. I mean, the design on this is amazing. The detail on it is incredible. We've ordered uh, a few of them in for the store, but I really don't expect these to hang around long. The, they're just absolutely brilliant. I've ordered, uh, there's a Batman figure that is, you know, sort of part of a set with it. That hasn't arrived yet, but those have been ordered for the store as well. So hopefully they'll not be far behind, but oh, so nice. And then, yeah, just to guide you through some of the graphic novels, as I say, some of the stuff that came out this week. So, uh, first of all, we have Post York. This is a original graphic novel. Uh, this is released through uh, Dark Horse, through the Burger Books uh, label. And this is uh, by a creator called James Romberger. So, original graphic. I have set one of these to the side for myself as well. So, in a submerged New York City, Crosby, an independent loner, struggles to live another day within a makeshift community of desperate young survivors while the depraved elite thrive high above the waves. But his precarious existence is challenged even further when he encounters both a mysterious woman, is there any other kind, and a trapped blue whale. Will they be each other's salvation or destruction? It weaves a tale of environmental horror, survival, and the extremes of human behavior. So I think that sounds pretty cool. You've got La Voz de Mayo, Tato Rambo as well. This is, I believe, a uh, adaptation of a true story. New one there. We've got the Companions for Amazing Spider-Man, Last Remains. So if you're looking to read Last Remains and Trade, the Trade of the Main Amazing Spider-Man issues came out last week and we have those in the store. 
and then at the time it came out there was dot lr issues that were uh linked to the story that's what this collects all of so if you're looking at getting into all of that storyline that's how to do it you also have the next of donny kid's venom uh volumes out next as well so we're up to volume five now this covers venom beyond uh which was a really cool sort of alternate uh universe venom almost uh, Venom ended up basically through a Portland on a, in a different universe and things were a little all over the place there. Got a nice European graphic game called Taxi which is uh, all about the, the different people who get into the back of a taxi cab and the different lives that sort of pass through your life and all those sort of experiences. <coughs> Pardon me, we've got Scene of the Crime. This is uh, one of the early Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips ones and in fact Michael Lark is the artist on this as well. But this is your classic Brubaker Noir. I got one of these for myself as well. And yeah, if you if you really enjoy their criminal stuff and Fatal and Reckless and why wouldn't you? Then jump on that. We've got the latest LS Cot graphic novel just collected, which is Lost Soldiers as well. So that's the full collection of that image series. A couple of hardcovers in, so we're starting to get the uh, the deluxe Batman books in again. So uh these go through fits and starts of being in stock at Diamond, so I saw a few of them in stock, so I had to get them in. So this is number two, which covers issues 16 to 32. And then we also have volume one, which covers issues one to 15. So you've got I Am Gotham, I Am Being, I Am Suicide in that one. And then I believe for this one, you've got the likes of The Proposal, War of Jokes and Riddles uh, in that as well. Also have a classic story by Chuck Dixon, the creator of Being. This is Robin Year One. Uh, again, a lovely deluxe hardcover has come in for that. And then this seems to be a Donny Kid story that not many people have read. I've got a few of these in, uh, which is called Baby Teeth. This is through Aftershocks Comics, and it's all to do with a, a young mother who's given birth to the Antichrist. It's supposed to be really, really good. I haven't read it myself, but I'm definitely going to at some point. We have Dragon Age, so for you gamers out there, this is the first five graphic novels compressed into one volume, released through Dark Horse. Got Stranger Things 6, so that was a tie-in to the series. Latest AWA release, which is Grendel Kentucky, which was not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I said and read this all in one sitting, I thought it was going to be to do with just biker gangs and sort of small town Americana. It is that, but it's also to do with like urban legends and there's a lot of horror in that. So it was really, really good. Got Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. So you're going back to the classic eras here. This was when uh, Todd took over, dropped the amazing and just released a title called Spider-Man. And it was, so this one collects Spider-Man 1 to 14 and number 16, as well as X-Force number 4. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, uh, that's some classic 90s Spidey right there. We have a Matt Kent uh, graphic novel, Revolvers, so if you're a fan of his stuff. Uh, so Matt Kent is responsible for the likes of Ether, for the likes of Bang, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Folklords was another one, but Revolver. I have a copy of that for myself as well to read. Uh, just so you know, I didn't take the only copy. Wonder Woman Earth 1, Volume 3. Got the Trades of American Gods back in again. Again, you get these lovely hardcovers. Three volumes in total for this, which is number one, Shadows, number two, My Ainsel, and number three, The Moment of the Storm. And just a couple to finish off with. We have another couple of Stranger Things ones. We have, first of all, Into the Fire. We have one aimed at slightly younger readers, which is The Bully. And then I chatted about this one before, the Garth Ennis PJ Holden uh, string bags. So just wanted to continue getting more of those in as well. So yeah, those will all be uh, put into the store. Of course, if anything, you know, appeals to you in the meantime, let us know, we can stick it in your, your pull box, that kind of thing. But again, I just like showing off the uh, <clears throat> the sheer range of stuff that we are we're getting into the store, the amount of new stock that you guys will have a chance to, you know, have a peruse through, maybe pick up along the way once we, uh, once we get back open. So, that's pretty much all of that. There was just a few things I just wanted to bring up and uh, have a quick chat about. Um, you know, the, the countdown, of course, is on for the Snyder Cut, but for some people, they actually got to see it early by the look of it. It would seem that uh, it popped up on HBO Max by mistake yesterday, and it was a case of some users who attempted to access the new Tom and Jerry film reportedly found they were playing Justice League instead. I really do get the feeling that... Warner Brothers just love messing with Zack Snyder at this point. I feel, started to feel really sorry for him. 
Um, I know I shouldn't feel sorry for a guy who was handed 70 million and the keys to the kingdom and everything he wanted to release his vanity project. But I would just say do your best to stay off social media for the next week. It's obviously due for release next uh, Thursday. And I would imagine there's going to be spoilers everywhere. It wouldn't surprise me even if people have fast forwarded to the end and seen how it's ended and then they're going to put up, you know, pictures online and stuff like that. Because that's just what people are like. They love the spoil stuff. There were some new trailers or sort of character trailers released through the week there as well. You know, you had individual trailers for Wonder Woman, for Batman, for Superman, Flash and uh, Aquaman. And then today they released one for Cyborg as well. So... They're just about 45 seconds long. They're predominantly sort of voiceover stuff from the, the movies Zach has done up until now. And then you've got some new footage and some footage you'll recognize as well. So they're worth checking out. But again, I'm trying to avoid trailers now at this point because it's out next week. So I'm happy to wait. So One Division ended last week as well. Uh, I had a good discussion with Keith and with Patty on the podcast about this. I personally wasn't a fan. I did not like how it ended and I thought that it was the kind of series that promised so much and didn't quite deliver in the end. That's not to say that there wasn't really cool stuff in it. Of course there was. There was there was lots to enjoy. But I just for me anyway, I felt that the ending fell flat. And, you know, spoilers. The fact that uh they played the Iron Man 3 line again essentially with uh, Pietro in this one. If you think back to Iron Man 3 and, you know, the Mandarin being released as, oh, I'm Trevor, I'm Trevor, I'm an actor. You know, they created this brilliant villain and then destroyed it with that twist. In this, they did the same thing. They they played with the fans. They got a Pietro in from the, the X-Men universe. Everyone thought this is it. The, the crossover is going to start. They're going to start folding the X-Men in. And then it turned out that he was just a neighbor who just looked like him. And not only that, they made a boner joke out of it as well. I mean, come on, Marvel, you're better than that. So there was lots that I wasn't a huge fan of, but again, you can listen to the podcast on it. So we had a good 15, 20 minute chat on it. Uh, the guys enjoyed it more than me, which is absolutely fair. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Just for me personally, it wasn't quite for me. And then just a couple of things uh, I wanted to throw out is a couple of announcements. So there is a, a new Spider-Man event coming up in June, which is actually going to be covering Spider-Man's first ever solo supervillain which was a character uh, called The Chameleon. And there's going to be a weekly event running through June. So it's called Chameleon Conspiracy. It's going to start off with uh, Amazing Spider-Man 67 and then the 69. And then there's going to be a, a giant size Chameleon Conspiracy wrap-up one-shot as well. So it's only for the month of June. I, I know some people I've chatted to about this were worried about Spider-Man going weekly. It, it can already be hard to keep up with on a fortnightly basis. But this just looks to be a, a monthly event, or a month-long event, I should say. So, yeah, hopefully I'll enjoy Spider-Man enough to still be on at that point. We shall see. Uh, Wonder Woman as well is getting an 80th anniversary plan, um, similar to Batman and similar to Superman. So they, of course, had their 100-page specials, and loads of variants, and, you know, decades variants, and all that kind of stuff. So I'd imagine you're going to see the exact same thing here with Wonder Woman. So you're going to have... As I say, an 80-page special. It is going to bring together some of the greatest storytellers in comics and entertainment for a tribute to Wonder Woman. So they've only released the cover so far. They haven't actually released any of the creative teams who are going to be uh, are going to be involved in that. But we'll keep an eye out for that. Those I love those 80 pages uh, or 100 page specials. I should say 80th anniversary. The Green Lantern one was really really good as well, despite not being a big Green Lantern guy. But I thought the that one shot was brilliant. And then just one last thing I just wanted to throw out just in case you guys hadn't seen it for any gamers out there. They released footage of a new Aliens game called Aliens Fireteam, which is going to be a third person three player co-op survival horror shooter. This looks awesome. Holy moly, this just looks like Gears of War, but in the Alien universe. So hopes are high for that. Check out the trailer if you haven't already and uh, have a wee read up on it. But it's, it's nice to see some exciting looking things happening in the Aliens universe. And of course we have the Aliens comics starting soon, coming from Marvel as well. So good time to be an Aliens fan. So that's going to do it for us for this week. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. As I say, if you saw any titles that you like the look of, get in touch. All the new releases will be on the website tonight. Uh, available for purchase. And again, any sales we make, they always go out that day.
uh, I'm happy to do post office runs. It's, it's just around the corner from us, so works out well. And uh, yeah, check out the reviews podcast we just dropped as well. If you fancy listening to three guys sit around and chat comics for an hour and a half and debate one division for 20 minutes. So anyway, hope you guys are staying safe out there and uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.